God is light and in him there is no darkness at all. How powerful is that? That our God is light and no darkness has fellowship with him. That's the power of the cross. That's what the cross did for us. Jesus Christ died for us that no darkness could overcome us. That death would have no sting and hell would have no victory. That we would have eternal life in him. He is our bread of life. He is our resurrection. He is our healer. He is our comforter. He is truth. This is what Jesus Christ did. If we believe on him, we believe what he did, and we are buried in baptism with him, we die through repentance, and we receive his spirit, all that God is, all that he is, lives within us. His joy, his peace, his kindness, his goodness, his faithfulness, his light is in us. And if we walk in that light, then we have fellowship with one another. The blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. That's what First John says. This is the message which we have heard of him and declare unto you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say we, that we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. So when we walk in the light, God shows us our sin within us. And if we confess it, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sin and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. But if he reveals something to us and we say it's not true, that we don't have that sin, we make him a liar. David said, search me, search my heart. See if there's any wicked way in me. Know me, Lord. He wanted all of God to reveal everything in him. And that's the power of Jesus Christ. The enemy cannot do anything to us but speak. He can use his voice and sometimes we can believe it and take it upon ourselves. But if we walk in the light, God has no fellowship with the darkness. The enemy is afraid of God. And he lives in us. We are the temple of God. That was the purpose of the cross. That we would walk in the freedom and grace of our God. Not to obtain acceptance or love because he, he already loves us. He loved us so much that he sent his son into the world. That the world through him may not perish but have everlasting life. But if we say we believe and walk in darkness, then we lie. Listen, he said that I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come back for you. He's coming back for us. That's his promise. And his promises are yes and amen. They are not void. He's going to come back. And he's going to come back for his people, his church, his bride, people who believed on him and allowed themselves to be surrendered to all that he is. And walk in his light. And then we'll spend all eternity with the greatest treasure we could ever get. It's not going to be silver and gold. It's not going to be relationships. It's not going to be the next thing. It's not going to be a better job. It's not going to be alcohol or drugs that's going to fill that void, that's going to fill a brokenness that we feel within us, that's going to help us escape from the guilt and shame that we feel from things we may have done or things that have been done to us. There's only one, 
and it's God. He was bruised for our iniquities. He was wounded for our transgressions. The chastisement for our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. He is a mender of the broken hearted. He gives us the garments of joy and praise for the spirit of heaviness. He gives us beauty for ashes. So, do you feel crushed? Do you feel hopeless? Do you feel discouraged, humiliated, embarrassed, rejected, alone, unwanted? There is one reaching out to you today, waiting for you to receive him. And he's all that you need. Does that mean that we'll never face hard times again? That nothing bad will ever happen? No. But we'll have one who is a comforter in our sorrow, who knows grief and can help us through it, who can give us joy in the midst of chaos and peace in the midst of tri tribulation. That's the power of the cross. And when you believe that, listen, I cannot describe the joy God has given me. There's been dark times, there's been hard times, I've, I'm the worst of sinners. I've done horrible things. <laughs> I was an alcoholic. I was promiscuous. I was, I was an adulterer. I had been abused. rejected I was bitter and broken and in my worst state in my worst state God met me when I was the ugliest I had ever been when I was the most disgusted with myself, I met him in a way I could, I had never met him before. <laughs> and he showed me love and mercy and forgiveness. He refilled me with the gift of his spirit. There's nothing like it when you come to know the Lord and the beauty of coming up out of being buried with him in the waters of baptism not for the sake of a tradition but to enter into a covenant like a marriage contract the changing of a name I'm no longer who I was, but I bear the name of Jesus Christ for the remissions of my sins. And receiving the Holy Ghost, receiving the power of God inside you, <laughs> speaking languages you don't know, letting the Lord flow through you to minister to the sick, to the hurting, There's nothing more beautiful. And that's what he wants for you. To be a part of his kingdom. To know love in a way you've never known. To know joy and happiness. To have eternal life. So... Come to him. Come and see.